I'm here at Google to learn all about Android 16 and Gemini, and who better to show me than Samir Samat, president of Android. First, there's a huge UI refresh, and uh, we're really excited for people to take a look at it and give us their thoughts. Uh, second, uh, we have heard from consumers that they are excited about, about what an, a, a digital assistant can do for them. So we're bringing Gemini to more surfaces on Android, including the watch, uh, the, the car, the TV, and more. Uh, and then finally, safety and security. Um, there's a number of features in this release that will help with all of that in your daily life. For Android 16, there are three big pillars. One of them is going to be this new material expressive UI. It overhauls the entire phone lock screen and home screen. Going into your phone, you'll notice that you can continue to glance at uh, your live update with the status bar chip. It stays whenever you're in context of an app, or any other content, it'll always stay up there. But it's also about how it makes you feel. All these touches around beauty and aesthetics, I think are, um, they're not always consciously meaningful to people, but <laughs> as you experience the device, you just leave with a sense of delight. In the new quick settings at the top, you'll notice it's also a lot more glanceable and customizable. You can edit these controls to be one by one or two by two or two by one tiles. Okay, so I'll just show you one of those really quickly with the internet tile, for example, if you want to squeeze that in, voila. You'll see more about the, the, the physics engine that we've got on, on phones that power the, the new material expressive system where, whereby items on the screen move and, and, and leave and enter with a more natural adherence to, uh, to physics that you would expect. Volume slider. So. You know, if you're hitting the end of it, there's a nice reactivity to it. Another thing we got to talk about was the integration of Gemini. It's not only on phones, it's also going to be in cars, watches, and even on your TV. And what's neat about this is you have full access to Gemini, whether it's uh, recommending a show for you or allowing you to actually do a doodle with your family on your home TV. In the past, where assistants maybe taught us how to speak to them, you had to say things in a particular way. Uh, now, with, these, with the advances in AI, you can just speak naturally and with all your ums and ahs and, uh, and all your you know, human affectations. I can also pull up movies. Hey Google, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And so this pulls up the, the movie page, um, automatically plays the trailer. But now it can do even more complicated queries. Hey Google, hey Google. Which Mission Impossible is the best one? That's a fun debate. Many fans consider Mission Impossible, Fallout to be a standout for its incredible action sequences and compelling story. Others might argue for the original Mission, Impossible for its suspense and classic spy feel, or perhaps Ghost Protocol for its globe-trotting adventure and Burj Khalifa stunt. The system can really understand. Um, where that comes into play and where that's really interesting is, of course, on the phone, but also on new form factors that are um, yet to be super popular, but I think are going to be, which is, uh, for example, uh, glasses, you know, where you have a, the ability for a, you to see a display that's right in front of you um, that no one else can see, and a camera that can help the assistants see the world as you do. AI certainly does have um, an, a, instances where it doesn't get things correct. And I think that what's important here is to understand the context. So obviously if you're using AI as part of Google search, that's gonna be a, a really important uh, area where factual information is, is, is critical. And the search team works really hard to make sure that they get that right. In other instances, like where we talked about um, uh, in identifying an image and describing it, um, the AI can do its best and, and, and it can actually be tuned to do quite a good job and also give a disclaimer to the consumer that's like, you may want to double check this if it's a critical decision you need to make. Like before you buy it, maybe double check this with someone. But I think it's, what we found is that consumers would rather have access to this technology and would rather use it where we can make it very safe even though in some cases there are instances where you may need to understand there are limits. One of the neat new features of Android 16 is scam detection. So what this does is in the messages app, if you are talking to someone that's part of a scam, uh, the AI and uh, software can recognize that and let you know before anything gets out of hand. It's an on-device model um, that's specifically tuned to help understand when a particular message may be, uh, or message thread may be leading you down a path which is uh, 
not great from the standpoint of revealing personal information. Now, it only works when you have uh, when you're having a conversation with somebody who's not in your contact. So it won't be bothering you with with folks who maybe are in your family or who that you you know well. But for those texts that come from other folks that you may not know, may seem innocent, may seem like they're from a company or something of that nature, who's trying to get a piece of information from you, it can be really helpful. Another problematic part of uh, modern life with a phone is people wanting to steal the phone, not just for the value of the phone but getting access to your data, your accounts, and your money. If your phone does get stolen, it allows you to lock down your information, your accounts, and passwords, so that person stealing your phone doesn't get access to any of that. For theft detection, we actually took the demo outside, and Samir was kind enough to let someone uh, pretend to steal his phone and see that in action. It's been an exciting time talking to Samir and seeing all about Android 16, and it generally does feel like this is one of the biggest Android updates in years. Now, what's next in store for Android? Well, we know that the public version is going to be out in June, and I'm excited to test that. I'm also excited to look more into some of the other aspects of Android, including the Wear OS overhaul on watches and Gemini coming to autos. That should be really fun. We'll see more about that hopefully this summer. Otherwise, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about Android 16 and some of the things that Samir said? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of CNET, please subscribe. Lastly, thank you for watching.